All right, so the FOMC meeting was in today, and there's a lot of things to talk about here. We'll break down a few things as the run. I'll play a little bit of a clip also uh, that you guys are going to want to see today, and we'll kind of give you some predictions maybe of where this is going. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. All right, a couple of things hitting, of course, just up front, no rate change, uh, higher for longer, expected response from Chair Powell. But I think the scenarios that are playing out right now, and I'll kind of explain this here in a second, is what does this look like in the December FOMC meeting? Do we get another potential up um, or up like kick in terms of the interest rate, or do we get a higher for longer uh, holding p pattern, which is what they've done so far? I want to jump over to uh, Bloomberg, actually, and kind of cover in a couple of points right here. Um, this one right here, Powell says, is likely to be uh, a true that a softer pace of growth and a uh, soft labor market are likely to needed to be getting inflation back on track. That not necessarily being the case right now, softer labor and softer growth, which obviously GDP has been continuing to climb. So this is something that has been a problem for Powell. Further into this, he said that the effect right now on the Fed hikes are being seen though. So that is this kind of this lagging element within the markets that says, hey, the Fed's been doing their job. They're causing all this to happen. But unfortunately, we haven't seen the real effect on GDP, labor, and some of the other markets. We have seen it in real estate. We have seen it in some of the securities markets. But he, uh, further in this is we'll take time. Uh, he's referring to resetting of borrowing costs, which is higher for corporate bonds and loans coming due that are refinanced at higher rates. That's the other factor that are going to be playing in here. So other things that he got into, I'm going to kind of scan up here. There's a few more notes that I had. Uh, Powell signaling that the September dot plot, this was another big one, that it may not be accurate anymore. And that, that one showed the majority of participants forecasting one more rake hike this year. So this is the question. And when he was answering questions from the, um, the journalists, they pointly went at him for December because the markets, when you look at the market response, even though we've seen S&P kind of adjust down, but some of the other markets, especially if you look at gold and even what's happening in the crypto markets, still trending up. And I'll show you guys some charts here in a second. We'll get into that. And also, by the way, we, we did a big video on Solana yesterday, precursoring some of the growth that Solana is now seeing today. I'll show you that as well. So make sure and stick around for that. I want to play a clip here from Powell in, from the live stream here. Let me kind of start it right here. At the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. All right, so I'm going to pause it there for a second. Now, so basically what I'm getting at here is that they have not deviated at all from going after a 2% inflation. And that to me still shows uh, the resolve that I think the Fed is going to have during these times in which we're continuing to see GDP rise, continuing to see strong labor, labor numbers, which we should not really be seeing, but yet still are. So either the Fed is wrong, yeah, or we're seeing a huge detachment in these trailing um, impacts from some of these market indicators that are just, just not necessarily taking place in the economy just yet. Now, we could be on the brink of either a rate hike that will come in December or potentially a scenario that plays out longer if we continue to see stronger GDP numbers. There was another thing that they were hitting on right here from the, uh, yeah, from the Bloomberg piece. This was talking about the long-term growth trend uh, it's around 2%. But right now, there's an elevated level of potential growth. This is the catch-up phenomenon that I'm talking about. And thanks to factors including unwinding of supply chain and increased labor force participation, rise in immigration, et cetera, he thinks that is, or they think, that is still the reason we're seeing this slowness of how the jobs market has been able to respond to this. Now, the question will be, does Bitcoin, and in general, some of the risk assets respond to this? Because when you look at some of these no hike responses over the past several months that we've done on the FOMC meetings, which by the way, we didn't do this one live today. Did you guys, do you care if we do these live stream or are you more interested in kind of the analysis afterwards? Let me know, drop some comments down below, make sure and subscribe to the show as well. But the point I'm getting at is if you look at Bitcoin, let's go over here to the Bitcoin chart. 
And obviously not a hot, a, you know, I don't think too many people were seeing or expecting too much movement anyway from Bitcoin. This is on the four hour. Uh, but as you can kind of see, just pretty much uh, the range that we've expected, which is around this mid 34 range overall. Now, does this set up though for another December run? Now, remember, if you go back here, I'm going to go to the daily chart and I'll show you something here that one of our analysts was kind of showcasing a little bit right here. Let's go back into December and we'll fly into it right here. So right here is the end of December right here. So you see this, let me kind of zoom in on this range right here. You'll see this range right here, which is kind of this sideways range that we're talking about right now, potentially. Is this something that could happen? Now, could it repeat? There are a couple things, big factors that play into January. Remember, ETF deadlines coming in January if we don't get an ETF before the end of the year. If we get an ETF before the end of the year, all bets are off. We're going to see some movement, obviously, with Bitcoin and some of the other markets. But the question will be, do we see that kind of lift in the market? Because when you go back and look at that, this came from December 30th right here to literally January 18th up almost 30%. So very similar to what we've seen in this short period of time right here over this short run uh, of where Bitcoin, of course, has grown up to around 35, 36K. And that's coming from this point right here around 26. So nice little move right there at 31%. So I'd love to get your feedback. Do you feel that this is going to continue to say slightly up, meaning could we get a 35K hold pattern on Bitcoin during this period of time and possibly see this little ramp. If rates though increase in December, does that put us in a position where we could see that retracement? Remember, a lot of people, a lot of analysts have been calling for a potential retracement in December, uh, or I should say over the next few months, could it happen in December if we actually get a rate increase? And at the time, if we get a retracement, then it's set up possibly for an ETF. And that of course gives you kind of these uh, explosive market and volatility uh, scenarios that play out into this. A couple of other things that I wanted to hit on. This was one tweet right here from Kathy Jones uh, over from Charles Schwab. And it was kind of interesting. Two-year treasury fell sharply following the release of the FMC statement. Market is interpreting that the statement as the Fed likely to be done with rate hikes this cycle. However, though the statement came out with, hey, we're pausing this cycle, obviously the case, but now based on what Chair Powell was saying in the conversations and the questions afterwards is that they have not ruled out the December rate hike. And I believe, based on the way I, he was talking in the, uh, in the conference, I believe we're going to see a rate, hike, a rate hike in December. And that's only because of the continued slowness in this market, this economic scenario. And I don't think we see enough movement in the securities market unless, of course, there are some factors in that. And, you know, we'll get into that. But mostly it's the situation around the global uh, conflicts that are occurring. So all of that playing into uh, his statements today. One other thing right here, uh, this was uh, the S&P 500 gains uh, close to 1%. This is just on the short period of time. And then the other thing here was his statement uh, right here on the banking system still being resilient. So my question is, do we see any kind of pressure on whether it's regional banks or other banks, especially as we continue to see this debt problem uh, continue to be a major problem within the overall architecture of what's happening monetarily from the U.S. government. So this is getting, um, it's getting interesting because timing-wise doesn't necessarily line up with what the current market is, meaning still strong GDP, jobs aren't moving. We are seeing real estate slightly, obviously commercial is a big factor here, but does this push the Fed enough to go ahead and pull the trigger on another rate hike. And I'd love to get your, your feedback. Do you guys think we will see a rate hike uh, coming in December? My, my point, I still believe rate hike is coming in December. I'd love to see the probability uh, charts in about a week to see what that might look like uh, coming uh, from the FOMC meeting then. Another thing uh, to be aware of, we have been tracking Solana pretty heavily today and yesterday. This of course is just a breakdown on sentiment. Big move over the last couple of days on Solana. And if you look at the charts on Solana, let me jump over to the chart real quick. Almost 44 right now, wicking up here to almost $47. This is up almost 14% on the day. So we look at Solana right now with many uh, lenses and most of it has been through the payment lens. 
But there's also, I think, some very interesting news that has yet to release. Remember, Breakpoint has still got two days yet to happen, and they've been releasing quite a bit. We're getting ready to drop a video today if, you, if it doesn't hit before this one. Uh, so make sure and check that one out. But this is a good example of why and what we've been doing with Soul uh, overall, this kind of upward trend. The big thing, though, is this amplification number is starting to really come in on overall sentiment, which is what I talked about yesterday, overheated sentiment data on Solana. So we'll continue to push in that direction. We're going to be doing a full breakdown on the FOMC impact because there's a lot of Fed news out along with the SEC, along with some of the reg regulatory scenarios that are playing out with some of our lawmakers that will break down that could affect the markets in a very interesting way in the way of an uptrend. We'll see how that goes. Of course, if you guys are listening in on the podcast, make sure and tune in here to the YouTube channel. It's the best place to get alpha like this. And if you're not in our diamond circle, make sure and get in now. It's the best place to get additional content, more stuff that we don't put here on YouTube, or you can catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.